All right, here we have Matthew Bradshaw. So Matthew had come to one of my overnight camps at Allegheny College, <coughs> excuse me, in Western PA a couple of years ago, and uh, he needs a little bit of help with his discus form and technique. So we're going to go through and watch this a few times in full speed. Let me just mute it real quick. I'm going to go through and watch this a few times in full speed just to uh, get an idea of what it looks like in real time, and then we're going to go through step by step. So let's take a look here. So the first thing we notice is that Matthew is really quick through the circle. He does a good job of kind of driving through, getting from the back of the circle to the front of the circle very quickly. Watch it one more time. And gets off what looks like a pretty good throw. So let's go through things here kind of in, uh, in real time. So you can see here that starting in the back of the circle does a really good job of getting separation getting that right arm back behind him one of the things I want you to watch out for here Matt is that do you see how you've got it low and you've got this almost a 45 degree angle at the armpit you're also leaning forward quite a bit in the back of the circle so you can see right here at the beginning of the throw this is actually the beginning of the video. So you do a good job of pulling the discus back behind you, but it's almost a, like an optical illusion where it's back behind you, but it's pretty close to you as well. So what I'd love to see is to get your chest a little bit more upright in the back and see how your shoulder is twisted back. You've got your shoulder almost like the thumb at one point is pointing up in the air. That's sort of an optical illusion that a lot of coaches don't catch. Yes, it looks like it's far back behind you, but it's really not as far back as it could be if you just relaxed your arm and let that thing come back at a 90 degree angle at that scarecrow position in the back. You know, rather than trying to put that thumb up in the air and really torque yourself back, see how you've got that right shoulder is flexed that's not really going to translate into a relaxed, loose upper body. And we're going to see what happens here is that as you come through that circle, now you've got the discus up and back a little bit, but see how you're almost shrugging that right shoulder into your ear? You've got that right shoulder way up into your ear, and the discus is down by your hip. So see that, how the discus is kind of down here? It's not really by your butt like a lot of people. But some guys send in videos and it looks like they're going to kick the discus right out of their hand. So I want you to work on keeping that right arm a little bit more relaxed in the back. And I want you to work on keeping the discus up a little bit higher. It might feel like it's over your head. A lot of times though it's not. It's going to be even with that right shoulder. What that's going to do is it's going to make it a lot easier for the hips to get ahead of the discus and the hips to win that race through the middle. So you can see here what starts to happen whoa you got this big lean through the middle of the circle look at that big lean through the middle of the circle you're really rocked back at a big angle here i think what you're trying to do is you're really trying to emphasize getting that right hip to be really far in front of the discus and in an effort to do that you're taking that right hip and you're kind of really trying to pop that right hip and push that right hip forward in front of that discus. But again, being relaxed is going to grant you more separation. So right here, everything looks very tight. Everything here looks very flexed and very turned on. So you've got your shoulder. It almost looks like your arm is a little bent too. You've got your shoulder. The wrist is cocked. The shoulder is kind of still shrugged up. You're really trying to kick that hip ahead of the discus. Everything here just looks very tight. I want you to work on being a little bit more loose, being a little bit more relaxed, and creating separation because it puts you in a really bad position here in the middle. Rather than focus on getting the hip ahead of the discus, that's automatically going to happen if you're a little bit more relaxed separation will occur and the hip will lead the discus. You don't have to try to fight to get that hip ahead. What that's going to allow you to do is that wall drill position where you're driving down the middle of that circle so that the official out in the middle of the sector can read what it says on the front of your shirt. 
So right here, you're so focused on being tense. You got a tense upper body. You're trying to throw that right hip ahead of that tense upper body. And it just gets you in a bad position. You're getting pretty deep into the middle of that circle. You can see by the hash marks here, you're in, you're barely in the front half of that circle. You're almost standing kind of on the line. I'd love to see you a little bit deeper. And that's going to occur by driving, doing that wall drill, chest first, driving across that circle without trying to get that hip around uh, too, too aggressively and to aggressively create separation like you're trying to do. So that's really the big part is number one, being more relaxed in the back. That's going to be a huge thing. Be more relaxed in the back and be more relaxed in the middle of that throw and just naturally allow the right hip to come ahead of the right hand. Do that a lot more relaxed, a lot more passively than trying to really actively get aggressive and like toss that right hip in the air. Now you land in a pretty decent power position. For me, the power position always starts when the left foot touches the ground. So you can see here, you're doing a great job keeping your weight back behind that power leg. You've got your left arm back and in a good close position. You've got separation where you've got that uh, discus in your right hand is behind the right hip. But we're not in a power position yet. Power position starts when that left foot touches the ground. So let's see where you are. So right now the left foot's on the ground and you can see you've started to shift weight. So now your weight, your center of mass, your heart, if you want to look at it that way, is in between the feet. It's not, you're not in that gingerbread uh, cookie stance, but you're definitely not back as far as you could be. And you've started to open up a little bit with that left arm. So I like to see the left arm closed a little bit more. I feel like that helps the center of mass stay back a little bit better. It's going to get you in a better power position, have you more torque, have you wound up a little bit better at the front of the circle. And you can see here, if you would just move that foot in another inch or two, you're going to be another couple inches closer to the rim, get another couple inches uh, on your throw. And then finally, you can see here, you're jumping off the ground before that discus is ready to come out of your hand. It's very close, but I'd love to see you stay grounded and work that circle a little bit longer. So you can see here at this point, you can't push yourself forward to vertical anymore. And you're not able to accelerate the implement to push and really drive more power into the discus anymore because your feet are off the ground. So that's the big things I would work on with your throw. Again, staying more relaxed in the back, driving down the middle, chest first, instead of that right hip kind of leaning back motion. Landing in a more closed position. And then keeping those feet on the ground and applying power to that discus a little bit longer before you release. All right, so a lot of the same issues that we're seeing with some other guys, this looks like, I don't know how far this throw is, but it looks like a really good throw. It looks like a big explosive throw. Imagine how much farther it's gonna go if we correct a couple of these little issues. So thanks for sending in the video, Matt. Um, as always, guys, we only do a couple of these now probably per week. Um, our state championship is Saturday, so it's like go time with my local throwers. So I don't have a ton of time to work on these videos, but I'm going to try to do a couple um, each day to help you guys out. Keep sending them in, and I will talk to you guys real soon.